welcome to this session on water management in agriculture. Myself, Dr. Mahante Shirur, working as Deputy Director, Agricultural Extension at Manage Hyderabad. In this session on water management in agriculture, we will see how water is an important factor in agriculture and we will discuss some important water management strategies. We will also see how the water resources in India are, are panned out. The words of Sylvia Earle, no water, no life, no blue, no green, tells enough about the importance of water for the existence of all the life on the terrestrial and on the water bodies. If we look at the distribution of global water, more than 97 percent of the water is available in the oceans. That means less than 3 percent of the water is there as fresh water, out of which only less than 1 percent or around 1 percent of the water is available for human consumption which is existing as either ground water or the water present on the water bodies on the terrestry, water present on the land mass. We all know that water is very important for agriculture. Water contributes for the higher production productivity of agriculture and therefore this has an important implication on the income of the farmers. When we look at the water resources of the country, India accounts for more than 4 percent of the water resources and we have just about 2 percent of the land mass, but at the same time we are 17 percent of the global population. So this tells us the story that the per capita availability of water in India is less compared to the global average. Besides the high climate variability and the spatial distribution are two important challenges for water management in agriculture in the country. If you look at the global per capita availability of water, it is decreasing continuously on account of increasing population as well as decreasing water that is available for use. The water use by different sectors in some of the countries are shown in this particular slide. But what is more important here is that in India we use more than 80 percent of the water for agriculture. That means agriculture water management is an important way by which we can improve our water use efficiency and make the water available for other purposes. This is a map showing the river basin of the country and at the same time how the water is being used for the purpose of irrigation. We are fortunate enough to have several water basins which is supporting the agriculture in the country, but if you look at the data more than 39 million hectares of the total land mass is irrigated by the ground water and around 22 million hectares is irrigated by the canals. These are another pictures which also takes us to the other side of the story. These pictures shows that the water stress in the northwestern states is getting severe and then they are moving from the safe zone to the critical zones with respect to the water availability. This certainly calls for improved measures and improved mechanisms to save lot of water for agriculture in these states particularly. Now this brings us to the discussion of why water is so important, at the same time how the water management in agriculture needs enough emphasis. We know that two third of India's agriculture is dependent on the monsoons. The declining water table due to over exploitation of water and also the demand for water by different sectors puts onus on us to develop effective water management strategies to save water on agriculture front. Efficiency in water use in agriculture means that we save lot of water which can be spared for use by other sectors and also for human utilization. Now water use efficiency in agriculture is marked by efficiency of irrigation methods. Now some of the irrigation methods, age old irrigation methods like flooding have proved to be 
very less efficient in water utilization, both in terms of conveyance efficiency and water use efficiency. The improved methods like sprinkler and drip irrigation are found to be superior to the flooding method of irrigation. If you look at this particular slide, the drip irrigation with an efficiency of more than 80 to 90 percent proves to be better option compared to the flooding and the sprinkler irrigation. This is an example of a study on comparison of drip irrigation method with the flood irrigation method in sugarcane, wherein the study has proved that drip irrigation method has found to be quite superior over the flood irrigation method with respect to the productivity of the crop as well as saving on the electricity. Now we will discuss some of the best water management strategies in detail as how water management in agriculture can be more productive. The first important strategy that we can adopt is improving the water productivity. How we can achieve the higher water productivity in agriculture is mostly by means of shifting from monocropping or the rice wheat based cropping system to the multiple or diversified crops where there is less demand or less pressure on the water application. Besides the crop diversification, we must also emphasize on water saving technologies and management and use of non-conventional sources of water like desalinized water and also treated water from the savage. We must also put enough emphasis on the drainage system for agriculture land. Coming to the second important water management strategy that is the improving the productivity in rain fed farming. As we know rain fed farming contributes bulk of the food demand in India. We must focus enough on the water management strategies in rain fed agriculture. So there are water management practices like the mulching, the contour farming, the terrace farming and then using of the land mass part of the land for designing some structures for water utilization or water storage from the catchment are, are going to be very very important. At the same time like earlier case of improving the water productivity in order to increase the productivity of rain fed agriculture here also we must focus on crop selection. Here crop selection is mostly important on two accounts. One is the selection of the crops themselves and then the second one is some of the varieties that are tailor made to suit for the rain fed agriculture are to be adopted. Now supplemental irrigation from the tank irrigation and then saving of rain irrigation through some of the farm ponds are very very important to increase the productivity in rain fed agriculture. The third important method of water management strategy is improving the management approaches for water use or water utilization. In this particular case the focus is shifted from protective irrigation methods to the productive irrigation system and secondly supply oriented to service oriented demand. That means now we must focus more on the decentralized water management approaches wherein the decision making is left with the men and women involved in agriculture and water utilization. At the same time this will give lot of power to the water users association as how they want to make use of the water on collective basis. Now the fourth important approach which is rather the most important approach at the farm level is the water management strategies that we adopt at the farm level. These includes again the crop choice, the crop diversification, improving water use efficiency, reducing evaporation and transpiration losses, conservation agriculture practices, water harvesting structures, etc. This can be done mainly through some of the training and capacity building or awareness for the farmers, investment in improved irrigation methods and credit facilitation for better irrigation methods. For example, farmers who are not able to afford to install the drip irrigation methods must be adequately supported with the help of credit to go for higher use water efficiency methods like drip or sprinkler irrigation. 
In continuation to the water utilization techniques or strategies at the farm level, this particular slide speaks on some of the important efficiency measures that we must include by avoiding the leakages in gadgets and putting emphasis on developing some of the water savvy irrigation technologies and at the same time standardizing and manufacturing the protocols that facilitate better water use efficiency in agriculture. The fifth most important strategy is water management approaches by use of SREP. This strategic research and extension plan in the agriculture technology management agency at the district level can be of huge help if it is used wisely. The strategic research extension plan encompasses the diagnostic section and the strategy section wherein we can see some of the innovations and methods adopted by the farmers can be replicated in a larger scale. The agriculture technology management agency can play an active role as a means of propagating and promoting such practices which helps in bringing efficiency in the water management in agriculture. And the last approach is on water management approaches both at the macro level. This includes the national policies and then the international treaties where water management has to be taken on priority basis. Now we have seen the importance of water in agriculture as how we can bring efficiency and if we brought some efficiency in agriculture definitely the availability of water for other consumption like industry the human consumption also improves at the same time the food production are not paralyzed. Now several reforms and several policy initiatives at the national level have been made from time to time which has shifted the focus from the centralized planning to the decentralized planning and this way the water users association have played a major role in bringing efficiency in the water management strategies in the country and therefore such kind of approaches must be explored for their scalability and replicability. The international associations, the international treaties and the international legislations must be strengthened enough so that the water is put on the top priority of policy making so that the nature is sustained, the environment sustainability is maintained, agriculture production and the productivity are maintained to support the increasing demand for food. This particular slide shows a model of family kit drip irrigation which if adopted will ensure that the crop production activities are not hampered and at the same time the productivity of crops in a small land especially among the small farmers or the urban farming models can be enhanced. So if these kind of models can be replicated again escalated to a higher efficiency level this will certainly act as an incentive in our efforts to have a right approach for water management strategies in promoting agriculture and sustaining the environment and ecological balance. In summary, we know that agriculture is hugely dependent on water and we have no ways but to protect water or to conserve water to improve the agriculture productivity. As water influences the agriculture productivity, certainly the efficiency and the allocation of water must be judiciously allocated so that we improve the agriculture in the country. Water is getting scarce and therefore the water management strategies that we discussed starting from the increasing water productivity, improving the productivity of rainfed farming, policies at the micro level like farm level and using the SREP model to promote and propagate some of the good practices in water management strategies focusing enough on the national and international policies, all these things are going to play an important role in the overall water management in agriculture. Thank you.